Hello there, my name is Hocus, and welcome to the Etho TN Tree Farm tutorial. For those of you unfamiliar, this is what a basic version of the farm will look like, as recreated in one of my other worlds. And to use the farm, you'll first place down saplings on all of the dirt blocks above the hoppers, force the trees to grow using bone meal. Once all four of your trees have grown, take the water elevator up to the obsidian platform, Walk across the platform and drop down one block beside it onto the top of the trees. Break down through the leaves. Generally, you'd use a hoe or a shears to achieve this. Fall into the farm, get pushed back out, and watch the show. All of your blocks will be collected in this hopper system unless they have fallen atop the others and the rest of the farm is yours to clear out manually. Before we jump into the tutorial, everything you can see on screen right now is required for the build. So at the top here, we have all of our redstone components and miscellaneous blocks and items. In the bottom right, we have our building blocks. I would suggest bringing a bunch of transparent as well as opaque. You'll also need a minimum of two water buckets so that you can create an infinite spring and reuse it over and over again. And then down in the bottom left are the items required to run the farm upon its completion. To kick things off, you'll need to choose a center point for your build. I'm going to use this block here, and generally it's a good idea to mark it by digging it out. Then using some dirt creates a pattern around your center point like so, and ensure that on the outside dirt blocks, you are placing sticky pistons underneath them. So once again, two dirt, two sticky pistons, two dirt, two dirt, two sticky pistons, two dirt, and then finally two dirt, two sticky pistons and two dirt to give yourself a pattern looking a little bit like this. From the center point of your farm, you're going to want to dig out a further four blocks outside of the dirt. So center point, one, two, three, four. Center point, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can then proceed to connect these trenches up to form a square around the farm. And with the square dug out, you can then proceed to remove all of the remaining blocks on the inside of it. Once complete, you'll have something looking like this. In the center of the farm, we've already got a one by two open area. We'll want to dig down a further four blocks for a total of six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this part is important because you'll need to decide where you'd like to have your water elevator. Mine is gonna be on this side of the farm. So whichever side you choose, dig in that direction. From the bottom of this pit, dig out another six blocks. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, and then you are able to resurface. From the point at which you resurfaced, count back three blocks. So one, two, and three. And on the third block, using some building blocks, tower up 25 blocks. Once you have your 25 block tall pillar in place, you'll want to build a secondary pillar behind, starting here, and placing a block only every other block. You'll want to continue this until you reach this point right here. And at this point in the build, you should have something looking like this. Come back to the center of the farm and drop into the tunnel that we dug. Go to the end and count back three blocks. One, two, and three. On the third block, dig through the wall on the right-hand side and create yourself a four by seven area. So four by two, three, four, five, six, seven. After clearing out the room, you'll have something looking like this. From the small entrance that you dug to this clearing, take out one more block to the right-hand side and then place a repeater down in the space. The repeater should feed into a piece of redstone, which will then connect to a sticky piston facing away from the redstone. Next to the sticky piston, place a block of redstone and leave a gap before placing down a regular piston facing towards the block of redstone. Behind the regular piston, another piece of redstone dust. In front of everything we've just placed down, you'll want to use one of your building blocks here in front of the redstone and again on the other side in front of the redstone. We'll then have two comparators facing towards those blocks. And on the inside of the comparators, we'll want to have two hoppers that are connected to each other like so. 
You'll then want to take 30 random items, it can be anything in the game, and place them inside one of the hoppers. The clock will cycle through, so just let that happen, and once it resets, we can continue building. Once the hopper clock has reset itself, come behind it, find the gap here between the regular piston and the redstone block, and dig out four blocks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Take a left turn and dig out a further five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then come to the end of the tunnel, dig up to the surface, and if done correctly, you should see that secondary pillar that we made earlier. Come back out of the tunnel and lead a trail of redstone from this block here inside of the tunnel to this block here. Up at the surface, come to the secondary pillar and you may need to break and replace some blocks here. You'll want to create a little redstone torch tower. So block, redstone torch, block, redstone torch, block, redstone torch, replace the block and then take the torches all the way up the back of the secondary tower. And eventually you'll have something looking like this. This isn't necessary, but I would now recommend sealing up that gap that we made earlier. Back atop the torch tower, we'll want to place a further nine blocks like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Attached to those nine blocks, we'll want a seven by three platform. So we'll start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, to give us something looking like this. Starting on the right hand side of the platform, come out diagonally and up two blocks and then a further one. We'll then go back towards the left side, five blocks, three, four, five, and then two and one. And then back towards the right again, five blocks, three, four, five, and then two and one. And then back five blocks to the left, two, three, four, five, and two and one another one. And then for one final time, we'll need another five blocks here. Two, three, four, five, a further two and one. And then at the very top here, we'll just do four blocks to finish it off. And once you have completed this, your pattern should look something like what you see on screen. Facing towards the platform, you'll want to place six dispensers starting here and going up in a column. So one, two, three, four, five, and finally six. Following this, you'll want to recreate this pattern, but with a one block gap in between them. So just continue building exactly the same structure as we built last time. With the secondary pattern complete, you'll have something looking like this. Head back down to the platform and break out two blocks in front of the dispenser. Place a piston in the gap there and a block on top. And you'll want to do this on every level of the pattern. So piston facing inside, block on top. Piston inside, block on top. Piston inside, block on top. Piston, block, piston and block. Back down to the platform, we'll have a repeater facing away from the dispenser and into the block. And it will be set to four ticks, the maximum. And just as a side note, all of the repeaters in this sequence are gonna be set to four ticks. We'll then have a piece of redstone and that will lead into another repeater, which will go into redstone, redstone, then repeater and repeater. The pattern then just loops back around. So we'll have another repeater here. And that of course leads into redstone and then another repeater, which leads into two pieces of redstone and two repeaters. And like I say, this pattern will continue all the way to the top of the farm. And once complete, you should have a pattern looking a little something like this. Once again, we can just mirror the redstone on the other side of the build, setting all of the repeaters to four ticks. With that finished, your tower should be looking like this. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to get the redstone right here. Make sure that all of the repeaters are set to four ticks. Otherwise, this is just gonna explode and it will all end badly. Now, from the other side of the very bottom dispenser, we'll place a piece of redstone dust into three repeaters in a row. All set to four ticks, like so. Into redstone dust, into repeater, set to four ticks. Redstone dust, into repeater, set to four ticks. Into a block, into a redstone torch, into a repeater, with one tick only. To finish up this portion of the build, simply place a repeater facing into the dispenser. Do not change the ticks, one tick is okay. 
and then a trail of redstone dust leading all of the way to the last block here, which sits just above the redstone torch tower. Working again from the bottom of the torch tower, we'll place a block of soul sand here. And surrounding the soul sand, we'll want to tower up to the very top of the pillar. Once you have towered all the way up, you'll have something looking like this. And I have used glass, tinted glass, for my tower. It is maybe advised that you use something a little bit more blast resistant because these blocks can be affected by the TNT in the farm. From the very top block here, we'll place six pieces of obsidian. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And these should lead out into the center of the farm. You'll now want to make sure that you can access the inside of this tower. I'm going to use a simple spruce door and then fill up the inside of the tower with water to form a bubble column. With the water in place, you'll have something looking like this. Now back to the center of the farm, drop into the tunnel once more. Dig out the bottom block here and two blocks above it, as well as this one. And then we'll place a furnace. We'll come down here and place two more furnaces and another two furnaces there like so. And the reason why we're using furnaces is because they will not stick to slime blocks. At the back here, place a sticky piston and a slime block and then a repeater on the ground facing into that back block. At the other end of the tunnel, opposite the repeater that we placed earlier, you'll want to dig out another two block entrance like so and then a further eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then we'll come back in the opposite direction. Seven blocks, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then again, we'll go back nine blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then back once more, seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then finally, another seven blocks back in the opposite direction. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That should do the trick. With the area dug out, we will start from the tunnel again and facing into the room, place a repeater set to one tick, a piece of redstone dust and five repeaters in a row. And then three pieces of redstone dust and five repeaters in a row. Three dust, five repeaters. Another three dust and again, five repeaters. And then a final three pieces of dust, a final five repeaters, and then every repeater in this room, aside from the very first one that you placed, needs to be set to four ticks. And with that taken care of, we'll have a single repeater here set to one tick, and then a room containing 25 repeaters all set to four ticks. And then with that room finished up, don't forget to seal it back up again. Replace the bottom of this tunnel, the floor of the tunnel, up to this final block with blue ice. Then you'll want to place two pressure plates, one here and one there. And please make sure to use stone pressure plates, otherwise items will activate the farm and you do not want that to happen. Then go ahead and place a sign above the pressure plate and replace this last block with soul sand. And once again, create yourself a bubble column. And that will push you out of the farm again. Now back into the center of the farm where the dirt is. Behind the pistons, you'll want to dig out two blocks and do this on each side. Once you have completed doing that, once again, just join up the trenches. After doing so, you'll have something looking a little bit like this. Looking at your farm from this side with the bubble column on the left side of the dirt, you'll want to dig out the two blocks in line with this piston here and place a couple of repeaters. Then place one and two repeaters facing into the two blocks there. Again, do the same here. And one more facing into this block here. On the other side, again, we'll just do one and two. Now we'll need to connect all of the repeaters up with redstone dust. So first of all, place a piece right here and then have it wrap around the side like so and into the back of the two repeaters here. And then take the signal from this block bring it around and into that block there. On the following side, we'll do something similar. So redstone, 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 bring it around the outside into the back of those two repeaters and then finish up in this final repeater here. Here is an aerial view of how the redstone should look. You can pause if you need it for reference. 
Next up, we'll want to dig out six blocks behind our two repeaters here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, just to double check that we've hit the right block, we should fall back down into this room here. So once back in that room, we can place a block here and create a small redstone torch tower. So we'll have another block and another torch. And then from this top torch, lead redstone into the back of the double repeater setup. You are then free to fill those blocks back in to hide the redstone. Back up on the platform at the top of the farm, there is something that I forgot to mention earlier in the tutorial that will definitely need to be taken care of. So this block here in the middle of this redstone madness is where the TNT is going to drop, where the piston arm is extended. And you need to ensure that the TNT stays within that one block area. So to do this, take a block of your choice. I'm going to use glass and just create a cylinder around this block. And this way, the TNT has nowhere to fall but through this gap. Otherwise, it can land on your redstone and just completely tear it to shreds. All right, and then once you're done with that, you should have something looking a little bit like this. Just make sure that there are no gaps in the cylinder and also double check that you didn't place any blocks on the inside of that cylinder. Because like I say, if TNT gets stuck anywhere up here, it's going to be a real pain in the butt to fix. The final piece to this puzzle is to create a collection mechanism. So the way I like to do it is find the side opposite the bubble column, find the central block that lines up with the central gap, and place a hopper facing down. This will be the hopper in which all of your items collect. And then from this point, you can just extend hoppers away from the chain and link them all together. And you can really do this any way you desire. Just make sure that wherever an item falls in the farm, it will make its way to that central hopper that we placed right at the start. Once you're done, you'll have something looking like this, a square area of hoppers. And don't forget to grab one more water bucket and place it in the gap there so that you're able to get out of the farm when using it. And that really leaves us with only one more thing to do. And that is to test the farm on camera to make sure that everything was built correctly. So you'll want to fill your dispensers up with TNT. And with that taken care of, we can go ahead and plant the trees, make them grow, take the bubble column up to the obsidian platform, walk along and drop down through the farm, fall into the farm, get pushed out, take a few steps back in order not to get caught in the blast. And off it goes. Awesome. Very, very nice. And something I guess I didn't mention at the start of the video was that the pistons under these blocks are there to push these pieces of wood up so that you don't need to clear the farm out. You can simply just start replanting and go again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you found this tutorial video useful and that you'll have a nice place in your world for this amazing tree farm to go. This is simply the best tree farm in the game, in my opinion. It does require a lot of TNT, which can be rough, but as soon as you got your hands on TNT, this is the way to go, in my opinion. I cannot take any credit for it, as the title suggests, and as I mentioned earlier, this is one of Etho's creations. He's just never made a tutorial for it, so I figured that I would do so, as I was able to recreate this using the video in which he built it. Anyhow, that is going to be all for today. Please remember to drop a like if you did find this video useful. Subscribe if you are new and would like to stay tuned to more Minecraft content. I do also have an LP series and an SMP series that I run on the channel. They're both quite fun. And finally, leave a comment down below if you need any help or have anything else to say about the video. I do hope to catch you in a video in the future, but until then, take care. Bye for now.